All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just finished all 12 of the Jazz Melodic Minor Altissimo scales, four octaves. So now, like I said I was gonna do, I'm gonna talk to you about how to use this fantastic scale. For all intents and purposes, this is 40% of the jazz language. Just like understanding modes of the major scale, if that's half, this is basically the other half. I say 40% because there's still, you know, blues scales, chromatic, whole tone, and all that kind of stuff that's not derived from this scale. But this is a massive bulk of how we hear and define the sound of jazz. So let's get to it. Okay, so this video is really intended for someone that's already familiar with the jazz language, but here's this new thing that you haven't really had a chance to get experienced with, and I'm gonna give you this information. So I'm not gonna talk to you like you're a beginner with this video. Okay, so in the same way that we have this safe place with the Dorian minor, we have this safe place with this jazz melodic minor. In other words, every note works in the chord. Unlike on a major chord or a dominant seven chord, that perfect fourth is a real doozy, all right? With a Dorian minor, every note works. You can play any note and it only has a certain level of tension that's associated with the most dissonant notes. Same thing with this jazz melodic minor. Everything works. When you start building up the modes of the jazz melodic minor, we're basically doing the same thing that we would do with our major modes, but we're just treating this jazz melodic minor like it is our bass. All right, so let's talk about what the modes of the jazz melodic minor scale are. So the first mode, mode one, we generally just call it minor, jazz minor. I like to call it jazz melodic minor to separate it from classical melodic minor. Two is going to be Dorian flat two. That flat two, or you may see Dorian flat nine, if you see like a D minor seven flat nine, it should bang off in your brain. Okay, we're dealing with that jazz melodic minor thing. The third mode is a Lydian augmented major. So if we're in the key of C, third mode is gonna be E flat, but it has an A natural and a B natural with a D natural. So it's a major seven with a sharp 11 and a sharp five. The fourth mode is going to be our Lydian dominant. Fifth mode is going to be Mixolydian or dominant flat 13. Our sixth mode is going to be a half diminished with a major second. You may see this called a Locrian major two, Locrian sharp two, which is the one that I prefer to call it, or a Locrian natural two. It's all the same thing. It's basically a half diminished scale with a major second. And then the seventh degree is what we call super Locrian or our diminished whole tone scale. That diminished whole tone scale is so popular and so powerful, I could just as ready call this video diminished whole tone, blah, 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 theory, whatever. But it is the seventh mode of the jazz melodic minor scale. All right, let's continue. Okay, so just like we have our major scale, we can build a major bebop scale. Adding this extra chromatic passing tone can help to balance the scale. Now, I recently did a video called a reversed diminished scale, which is basically a major bebop scale starting on the chromatic passing tone. In that video, I explained how the unaccented note is the chord tone that we are outlining. Let me play an example of a major bebop scale 
articulated weird. <laughs> Sounds corny and ridiculous. Here's how it's supposed to sound. <laughs> Right? So when we're playing our scales, we're really trying to outline the structure of the harmony. The unaccented note is the chord tone. So with the major bebop scale, by adding the chromatic passing tone between the fifth and the sixth degree, we can outline the sound of a major scale, specifically a major six. We can do that same trick with a minor scale. Let's say we have Dorian minor, and usually we recognize there being two Dorian minor bebop scales. One adds a chromatic passing tone between the seventh and the root on the top, so we add in the major seven. So if we're in the key of D Dorian, we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C sharp, and D. The unaccented notes would spell out a D, F, A, C, giving us a D minor seven. So that's the logic, that's the theory behind that. Another way we can add a chromatic passing tone to this scale is to add it between the minor third and the perfect fourth. That gives us D, E, F, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and then back to D. That gives us, on the unaccented note, D, F, G, and B. That works really well because like I said earlier, Dorian minor, every note works. So we can really get creative. I can add a chromatic passing tone between the root and the major second, giving us just D, D sharp, E, F, G, A, B, C, back to D. You can do that anywhere. It's not commonly done that way, but you can do that. So that brings us to this jazz melodic minor. If I have this in the key of C minor, which is one flat, not a B flat, but an E flat, I can add a chromatic passing tone in a lot of different places. So if, you, uh, if you've been looking at Barry Harris at all, he adds this chromatic passing tone in the same place that you would add it if it was a major scale between the fifth and the sixth degree. And then from there, you can even build modes. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but that is the beauty of being able to add this chromatic passing tone. Now, I've been recently going through some of my recordings and stuff, and I found that I was very consistent with the way I was adding chromatic passing tones to this scale. So let me play that for you, and then I'll analyze what it is that I've been doing, and then I'll show you this new scale that I've created. All right, let's get to it. Before we move on, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about what it means for every note to work. So if you have your scale, you want to play any note in that scale over its equivalent chord. People say, hey, every note in the Dorian scale works on like that minor seven chord. What we mean is there's no note that will destroy the function of that chord. So let's say you have a major scale and you want to play the perfect fourth on a major chord. That perfect fourth, emphasizing it, is going to destroy the function of that chord, making it a suspension. So now you have to resolve that suspension. The same thing happens on a dominant seven chord. So Dorian minor, every note works. And like I said earlier, there's a certain amount of tension that every note has, but it doesn't destroy the function of the chord. The same thing works with this jazz melodic minor. Whenever you play any note on there, it doesn't destroy the function of that chord. Now, typically you get in trouble with major and dominant because it's the fourth degree that's usually going to be the one that's causing you a lot of mischief. So 
when you break up the modes of this jazz melodic minor, the dominant sevens and the major all have an altered fourth. The exception to this is the five chord. So if we're in the key of C, that G7, G, A, B, C, that C is the perfect fourth, which is gonna cause us some tension. However, it's a very easy thing to hear and fix when you're playing it. And besides, these chromatic passing tones help to reinforce the movement and resolution of said notes anyway. Okay, let's continue. The whole reason why I bring that up is because if every note works in that scale on its chord equivalent, that means we can go nuts adding chromatic passing tones anywhere we want because no matter how that harmonic rhythm makes it line up, every note works. All right, so I've come up with a scale that I love to use. I call this a blues chromatic scale because it's half a blue scale once you get to the tritone, which is halfway, then it's a chromatic scale up to the major seven because we wanna definitely try to emphasize that major seven on a jazz melodic minor scale. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so with that blues chromatic scale, I like to alternate between certain passing tones in certain areas. So I can substitute certain notes out, throw different notes in. So usually I swap out the blue note for the major nine. So let me play this for you and then I'll put a pad of chords all related to the jazz melodic minor scale, all modes, and you'll see how this thing fits in and how I'm just varying where I'm throwing in a chromatic passing tone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. I hope I was able to shed some light on this scale that can be a bit mysterious for those of you who are not that familiar with it. I do want to take this time to plug the next video. I got my uh, articulation video that's coming pretty soon. I'm waiting to get some better lighting that should be here pretty soon. So I got that coming up for you guys. All right, stay tuned. See ya.